In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to convert a computer power supply into a powerful lab bench power supply. The model I'm using in this video is the Corsair HX 1050 watt power supply unit. So this runs for about under $200 or $199. At Fry's, it runs for $229. Uh, so this is pretty much an update to my old power supply, which was a 450 watt power supply. So it's actually financially feasible to convert a computer power supply into a lab power supply because buying a high wattage power supply can cost thousands of dollars. And when a computer power supply these days are perfectly capable, capable of doing the same thing. So the pretty much, pretty much the voltages used in labs are 12 volts, 5 volts, and 3.3. .3. So this is this is exactly what a computer power supply provides and does a very good job of it. But we need to do some modifications first. So before we do that, I like to do a short test and and a short test short circuit test with with a short load on there or or with a small load on there to see what kind of things happen to the power supply and some of the safety features it has on there. Because sometimes uh, you accidentally do short out or misconnect uh, some wires uh, when you're doing an experiment or something or connecting it up. So a good power supply uh, should be able to withstand multiple shorts and continue running or working afterward. Some the, my old power supply actually just shuts off and then you have to wait like a minute to turn it back on, and that works for me. Other power supplies I've worked with, it once you short it, it's pretty much over, and that kind of sucks when you've actually started building and doing a conversion of a computer power supply to a lab bench power supply, and then you realize, oh, I shorted it out and it doesn't work anymore, and I can't return the unit anymore, or I just have to junk it. So I like to do that before I actually start converting. So. First things first, let's connect the power supply to the wall. So this is the provided power cable that's came with the Corsair 1050 watt power supply. Know how thick the cable is compared to your traditional uh, sub 1000 watt power supply. So this cable is going to provide over 1000 watts. So thicker cable is better for that. So here's an overview of the power supply itself. Here you can see. So it's semi-modular. This, where the PCI Express pins and the motherboard 24 pin connector come out, and then he gets some room for some bulk connectors. So pretty, pretty, pretty good. So I picked this unit because if it's fully modular, the inside circuit board just takes up too much space of the power supply. So I can't actually do uh, the conversion, which you'll see in the later in a later video. So let's actually plug this thing into the wall. So before we actually turn it on, to actually t uh, from the switch in the back, to actually turn on the power supply and actually force a 12 volt output or a five or other voltage outputs, you actually need to short the green wire with the ground wire, which is any of these black wires. So we can just do that by using one of these jumper wires that I have created. So pretty much just stick that jumper wire with the in the black pinhole and this one at the green. And we are done. So now we can actually turn on the power supply. So now let's actually test for an output, see what kind of uh, voltage readings we are getting. So I'm just going to be touching the black with any of these ground black wires, which black is for ground. So let me find an easy one. So there's one right there, and I'm going to connect it to yellow because yellow is the 
positive 12 volt rail, which is the one that I care about the most. So on the voltmeter, we we are getting 12, 12.14 volts. So this is perfect for for a 12 volt application. Next, we are going to connect a short a small load to it to see how much the voltage changes, and and then after that, we're going to do some short circuit tests to see the reliability of the power supply. So right here is a small signal jammer. It uses about 30 to 50 watts, so that should be sufficient to, be, to test for the voltage. Okay, just connecting this to the ground wire and just this one to the yellow wire because this thing operates off of 12 volts. Oh, and just to let you know, the amperage rating on the on the 12 volt rail is 80 87.5 volts and this is a single rail power supply which is more this is why and this is why I chose this for a lab bench power supply any single 12 volt rail will work great for a lab one I don't like multiple 12 volt rails I just don't like them just because they're limited in the current per per rail but I think 87.5 amps should be sufficient for any of my projects so far. So a application that requires a lot of current would be using it as a battery charger. So if you're charging, let's say a 30 volt pack or 24 volt pack at 20 amps, well, there's at least a, a minimum of 500 watts being used right there. So that's perfect for this. So we're gonna turn on the power supply unit right now. And then I just got the little green light indicator right here from the uh, signal jammer. And then we actually want to measure the output. Oops, they did not come out. Okay, still connected. Whew. It's good. And then uh, now we're going to test, test out what the voltage is now. Oops. I can get that connected. Okay, 12.14, turn on the jammer. All right, still good. Okay, now the, now the dangerous part comes out. We're gonna actually short this power supply. And if it fails, I'm going back to Fry's and returning the unit. Because this power supply says it has short circuit protection. So this is what happens when you short a 1000 watt power supply. Okay, you just heard the power supply just click, turn off. So now we're actually gonna turn off the unit. So this is a little small, small, small sparks. Wire actually didn't get that hot actually, surprising. Okay, let's wait a few, uh, few seconds. Okay, and turn back on. And the fan's spinning, and we have blue light indicator right there. Let's test for voltage again. Twelve point one four volts. Perfect. Okay, one more test of short circuiting. And then I think this test should be complete. And this is under a 50, 50 watt load. Okay, you heard that you heard that little clicking sound in the power supply. And this wire is officially welded to it. Okay. Okay, turn off the unit. Wait a few seconds. Don't smell any burning electrical smell right here. So that's a good sign right there. Give it a few seconds to turn on. Okay, and turning on unit. All right, 12.14 volts. 
So this is what happens when you short a 1050 watt power supply. And the, and I'd say the te it passed the short circuit test and load test. So now we are ready to move on to converting a computer power supply into a lab power supply.